Friends, good morning and welcome. It's great to have you with us as part of our online worship. Today we're finishing off our four-week series looking at the building blocks of faith. We're thinking about growing and risking. And I'm really pleased that Janice and Helen stopped by a little while ago to talk to me about that. So we'll hear from them later in our service too. If you've missed anything over the previous three weeks, you can go back and catch up with things uh, on our YouTube channel or on our website. But as we begin our service together today, let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the privilege of worship. We thank you for each other. And we thank you for the opportunity to think about our faith and how we might continue to place you at the centre of our lives. Inspire us today through the work of your Holy Spirit, we ask. Amen. Amen. Friends, let's sing together. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Oh, praise 
prayer for 2021. Lord, you are greater than our imagination, wiser than our wisdom, more dazzling than the universe, as present as the air we breathe and utterly beyond our control. We open our lives and our life together to you. Forgive us for the wrong we have done. Forgive us for the good we have left undone. Thank you for the grace and mercy that we find in you. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I asked of the Lord that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage, wait for the Lord. We believe that you are always on the move and doing a new thing. Equip us to respond creatively and imaginatively as you bring order from chaos, peace from conflict, love from hate and hope from despair. Liberate us to live lives of abundant generosity, unrestrained sacrifice and unabounded courage. Give us a renewed commitment to the justice of your kingdom and help us to love the people we will meet today without stopping to inquire whether or not they are worthy of that love. We thank you that no place on earth is God forsaken and no face on earth is God forgotten. We bring to you our church and its life and the people and the places that are on our hearts. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord, tune our spirits to the music of heaven. Give us responsive hearts, stirred up souls, attentive minds and a determined strength to follow you in your way. That a blessing may be ours and the glory be yours alone. Amen. Well, hello. Thank you for coming in to chat about uh, growing and risking in our faith today. So this is the final Sunday. It's part of our Building Blocks of Faith series where we're thinking about what it means to be disciples of Jesus and how we grow and develop in our faith. Um, so my first question to you both, Jace, we'll come to you first. Um, how has your faith grown or changed over the years? Um, I think it's changed quite a bit. So... I became a Christian in my early teens. Um, and I think with youth and in, um, also comes, and your initial part of faith is that whole enthusiasm. And I would say um, zealous to um, do things that was um, right, which I thought God would want me, uh, want me to do. I think one of them was, um, I decided God didn't want me to listen to non-Christian music. Oh. That was very important. So um, I'm glad to say I've moved on in my faith. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I suppose what, what happens is a maturity and development, but also the reality of life. So i.e. you've got, you know, you've got work, you've got family, um, you've got all the hassle that comes with, um, you know, just managing all of that and trying to actually keep on track with God staying in contact um, with God. I think what I asked for 
and how I ask for it and where I'm kind of seek, seeking God, I still try and do that. So like when we got um, bought the car, I remember buying my car, um, the guy was keen to sell it to us and I said, we just need to go and pray about it, is that okay? <laughs> and you know, I was married at the time, so now I'm older, but for me that was important and you know, making steps and like moving move down here. So try to, I think my faith has been one, whereas before it was like, it was more zealous, whereas now it's, I would feel like it, I'm hoping that it's embedded part of my life and therefore doing what's right before God. So like when my friend called me and said, you know, she's been diagnosed with cancer, she wants to go to South Africa. I just went, I just went, I'm going with you. And I believe that was the Holy Spirit saying, go with her. And I was not sure how I'm going to pay for that, but <laughs> hey ho, don't worry about that. So I think that's how my faith has changed the bomb where it, become, it, it feels more natural and I still need to at times be intentional so I work what's going on here and pray and actually trying to seek, seek God so mm. I feel it's developed, matured. Mm. What about you Helen, how's things changed in the time you've been doing your best to follow Jesus? I think in a similar way to what Janice is saying that first initial I was um, saved at Spring Harvest 12 years ago so there's a real excitement that comes with that and a real energy, um, a, a complete euphoria and that real kind of zealous aspect to it. I think it's over the 12 years, I would probably say that my faith is a lot calmer. So I still would class myself as very zealous and enthusiastic about my relationship with God and how I can serve God but I think I'm just calmer in it. So I might not necessarily make the same knee-jerk reactions that I, that I would have made in the beginning. Is um, There's a different kind of knowing that I think I experience with God now. And so I think I'm a lot calmer and I'm a lot um, better at waiting, waiting on God and praying um, for the right outcome that is aligned with him rather than kind of rushing ahead and thinking things are the right thing. I, I think I've, in, in my early relationship with God, I would end up doing things in an attempt to serve him that clearly weren't right for me and that didn't go very well. So I think I kind of learned to just hold back and really feel that nudge from the Holy Spirit. Mm. Yeah. So you both sort of describe faith almost becoming a bit more instinctive you know you kind of you, it becomes a natural part of, of who you are and how you go about things even given that have there been times when it's been more difficult to have faith do you go through periods where it just feels harder I think that there have been periods over the 12 years where life has been really difficult. And I think having faith has helped me through those difficulties, but I think at times it can be a double-edged sword, especially for people around you, that being a Christian doesn't mean that you're not going to experience difficulties. And I would um, at times find life really challenging as a single parent. I'd be really financially challenged at times and I think having faith in those moments was wonderful. I think I learned to ride it out better. Okay. I think that's probably the difference is it doesn't necessarily make life better. It doesn't necessarily change things really quickly, but I think it settles something within. So I haven't ever experienced a time where I have been lacking in faith or belief that God is there for me. But I think sometimes there's um, a real impatience. So actually, I've prayed for this. Why isn't this happening? I kind of really need to pay this bill or I really need to, um, you know, be able to get through this work issue or, or you know, um, I used to struggle with loneliness really, really badly uh, when, when my son was really small. And, and faith didn't necessarily make those things disappear but I think they certainly helped me to connect with um, God um, 
at the same time probably taught me some maturity and some patience I think as well yeah does any of that resonate with you and your experience too or is it different some of it's the same some of it's different so um I, I was diagnosed in my um, late teens with um, severe endometriosis, so I've had a life of um, being in constant pain, being in hospital, having major operations and th things like that. Um, but also, I think some of my, the, the challenges is when Christians, you know, about faith. If you have enough faith, God will heal you, sister, and, th and things like that. Um, and it, in one sense, that could actually really much push you um, away, um, away from God. Um, but I have got to say, in my lowest weakness, it has felt a bit like Joe, where I do scream at God of like, you really have got to, got to take this pain away kind of thing, um, this situation. Um, but at the same time, whilst still going through it, taking a little bit of things that are happening as a comfort and seeing them as God. So, you know, pain levels shot up to, um, you know, 20 now. Um, they ask you at hospital, what's your pain level like between one to 10? Mm -hmm. It's 20, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> and um, and I n I'll never forget one scenario where I was actually in hospital and, um, and they gave me the wrong drug. And I told her, don't give me that drug. I want the morphine. And um, because I knew that's what I needed. And they didn't. And they gave me the wrong one. And so I couldn't have the morphine. And so that meant I had to have six hours because that's how long it took mm. before they'd be able to give it to me. And during that time, I cried. It was many times. Ago, and I bawled. But there was when um, there was like little small release where I wasn't in agony. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Um, so, yes, I, as, as Helen said, you know, the Bible tells us, you know, the sun and the rain, it shines on the good, it shines on the good and the bad, and it rains, rains, it rains on all, all of us. Um, but I think what faith does, it enables you to, to keep, keep going. Um, and it enables you to see God in the things that maybe nobody else would see God. Um, God in, you know, my kids know when we go and park, it's like kids, we're praying for a parking space, we found a parking space, thank you Lord. So it's from those small things too, I don't know if I can actually live another second in this pain, mm -hmm. Lord, you, you've got to do something about it, just something, and whether it's the nurse coming in and just say, saying something nice or just holding my hand and stroking, okay, mm -hmm. I'll, t I'll take that for now. Mm -hmm. So. One of the things I wanted to ask you about today is um, whether your uh, faith has enabled you to take risks that you might not have taken or to make sort of bold decisions you might not have taken otherwise. So what risks has your faith encouraged you to take is what I, I'd like to know. Um, Janice, what about you? Um, I suppose one of the things was moving down here. Mm -hmm. um, Friends and families said, don't do it, don't do it. But um, I did, you know, we, we, pray, we prayed about it. And I honestly believe, I felt God was saying, you know, step about stepping out. It was quite easy to stay in London, within the comfort zone, I think, things like that. Um, and just step out and, and have, you know, have faith in that. Now, I have to put a caveat on that because in this stepping out and moving down here has come in one a whole heap of other things that I hadn't never actually um, would I maybe I should have thought through but um, but hadn't um, so life has been extremely challenging so in that jumping out mm. um, and having I have at times gone oh god was that me <laughs> or was that you um, but regardless of whether it was me or not, you know, whether it was me or whether it was you, this is where I'm at right now. And how do, how do we get through this? How do, you know, how do I get through the challenge of the educational system <laughs> that, you know, is constantly 
you know, challenging and I feel being, you know, discriminatory, you know, within, you know, within, within that and things like that. So, yes, I have, I feel, you know, my faith does enable me to do, you know, do things that are actually different and actually um, step out. Um, but I think one of the things I would say to someone is regardless of stepping out in faith, it doesn't mean just because you step out in faith, it's all now going to be smooth. Yeah. And I think that's, if anything, that's the thing that I've learned. So stepped out in faith, moved away from the things that I knew, the things that I had security in, my security blanket, assurances, knew how it all worked, how it all fit together and everything else, um, and stepped in what, into what I didn't know. Um, you know, in one sense, it feels kind of biblical. You step, step into the air of like living with people who I, you know, like, I didn't know in one sense. My, my life was um, majority black, apart from when I went to work, I went to school and those, those kind of things. But that part, in sense of going to church, that was black. Um, so doing that, it has been, it's been hard. I, I have questioned myself. Um, I've learned not to beat myself up too much. So, but God, has, but God has always been there. And for me, that's, that's always been the import, important thing. As long as God's with me, it's okay. We'll get through this somehow. I don't know how, but somehow we will, we will get through this. Things will happen. People turn up like Helen and Hazel <laughs> and Caroline and Kahizi and Richard, you know, who come into your life and things like that. And you're just like, thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. So, yeah. So I believe I've ended up, I think we've lived a different life yeah. than what we... Um, would have done um, and in that I think well God you know what's going on in the spiritual atmosphere that that you've for by us moving here that you've done certain things and I haven't got the faintest idea but I trust you. <laughs> so Helen what risks do you feel like your faith enabled you to take? I think the biggest risk that stands out for me is the one that I'm still living in I think which is my um, transition as a psychotherapist to a chaplain. So um, a really big risk and a real leap of faith, I think, was hearing from God and hearing from a few other people that I'm really close to that I should go to study theology and I shouldn't continue my studies with psychotherapy. And I did really resist that in the beginning because I had an idea of what my life would look like um, as... Um, as a, as a psychotherapist with masters and, and maybe PhD. So applying to Bible college, attending an interview and then actually starting was really against everything that I thought would ever happen to me. And I, it was almost like I was swimming in the wrong direction. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it took me quite a while to get my head around that. And I think when I started Bible college, it didn't necessarily just become really easy. It'd be like what you're saying, when you move down here, it wasn't like, and breathe. It's, it's, been, it's been amazing and it's been exciting, but it's also been really hard work because I started studying theology with a group of people that had already done a lot of theology. A lot of them were already pastors, they were already chaplains. So every assignment and every book, it was almost for me like learning a new language. Um, and there are even times now as I kind of finished my training at Bible College and and have started work as a chaplain that I feel that I have to reconnect with the journey that I'm on now. Um, and I think that step of faith comes in with the, with the, there are risks and you do lose out on stuff as well. So losing out potentially on, on the dream that I had of who, who I might be. And then God saying, actually, that's not going to happen. And thinking, and, and we read like God's, God's ways are higher, so don't lean on your own understanding, but actually we, we do lean on our own understanding because we're just human. So it's like a real, these things aren't easy. You might read them, but they're actually not really easy. So I think the, the step of faith or the leap of faith or however people might experience it is not always an easy journey. So the risks, there are a lot of risks. Um, I think for me, changing course, um, 
literally changing a course um, and thinking about becoming a chaplain, there were lots of financial risks for me as well, which I really kind of battled with because I felt like I got to a stage in my life where I was really comfortable and then I'm going to change course. I'm actually going to do a job that pays less, but I've still got the same demands on me. But amazingly, I think in that is we, we learn to adapt to the new environment. So it's thanks to God that through that step of faith, I've, I've learned and I'm still learning to be a chaplain, but I've also learned so many other things as well. So there's a lot more maturity in my faith and a lot more maturity just in general in me as a human being that happens. So there's some really fantastic stuff that happens. Like you say, when you moved down here, it was difficult, but you got to meet me <laughs> and Hazel. <laughs> so, you know, praise God. Yeah. <laughs> um, and again, I've had some wonderful experiences at Bible College and, and love being a chaplain and feel honoured and privileged by that. But there, there's been... Um, a lot of hard work and a lot of tears and a lot of I don't feel good enough to be here kind of stuff that goes on internally as well and have I made the right decision and everybody in, in class is so clever and and I kind of feel like oh you know but it's and that's that's the step of faith and it's sometimes about just trying to focus completely me and God rather than what everybody else is doing because we're all on such an individual journey and our, f our faith experiences are just going to be so different. Thank you both so much for coming in to talk. Really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks You're for welcome. having us. <laughs>
Good morning everyone. Today's reading will be taken from Psalm 16, verse 7 to 11. I'll praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With, with him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead nor will you let your faithful one be see decay. You make me known to me the path of life. You will find me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. The second reading will be taken from Mark chapter 1, 16 to 20. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you how to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat, with the hired men and followed him. May the Lord bless the word. And so here we are at the end of our four week look at building blocks of faith. I've really enjoyed this series, enjoyed hearing from other people in the panel discussions and also hearing from you as you chatted about it and shared your feedback with us as well. Uh, next week, we're going to be doing uh, something uh, different. We've got a visiting speaker coming. The week after that's an all age service, and then we're at Pentecost. And then after that, we're going to be looking at some Old Testament prophetic texts together. Really excited about all of that. But as we finish this series today with a look at the first chapter of Mark's Gospel, let's pray. And so, gracious God, in these moments, may the words of my mouth and the reflections of our hearts and minds together in these moments be found pleasing in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We have no idea how many generations of the Zebedee family had been fishing on the Sea of Galilee, but it was likely to be a fair few. At that time, in that culture, as in many around the world today, a small family business can be handed on not through, only through generations, but over centuries 
it's safe, it's secure, people know what they're doing, there's a role within the community that comes with it too. But then along comes this prophet from Nazareth and told James and John and their neighbours, Peter and Andrew, to drop it all and follow him. And they did. Leave everything you've ever known, all your security, your family, your trade, your income, and follow Jesus. That was the call they received in these moments. And the way Mark tells the story, it sends echoes ringing back throughout the Bible. If we think about Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, who's told, leave your country and your father's house and go to the land that I will show you. Leave something and come into this new life that I have for you. And so as Mark's gospel begins, something new and significant is starting to happen. The old family business of God's people is being left behind. And instead, God has new things in store. And these new things, the adventure awaiting the disciples that they can't even begin to comprehend in these moments, well, it's about the good news that the living God is on the move. And friends, it's worth noticing, I think, when Jesus chooses to act here. Before this point, John the Baptist is going around talking about God's kingdom, eating some bugs, and as long as that's happening, Jesus can bide his time a little. At this point, though, John is now in prison and Jesus has to act. Everything we know about Jesus suggests that he would have prayed and waited for God's sense that this was the moment to begin his ministry. And God speaks through situations and events, as well as through the still small voice in the heart. And God was now saying that if the new movement of God's kingdom is going to keep going forwards rather than backwards, it's time for Jesus to go public with his own vocation. And so Jesus comes to the villages of Galilee as a wandering prophet with a message that God's time has come. Jesus' message was one that called people back to God and back to ways of life that were life-giving for the people. As he begins his teaching, turning back to God may well have involved turning away from a disastrous war that was on the horizon for the people, but it also meant turning back towards being loyal to God and God's ways. The call to turn back to God, to repent, is part of God's rescuing and redeeming work in the world. Jesus' contemporaries trusted in all sorts of things, their ancestry, their land, their history, their temples, their laws, even their God, providing that God did what God was expected to do. But Jesus was now calling them to trust the good news that God was going to do something new. The challenge for them was to go all in, to cut loose from their other ties and to trust God for their future. That wasn't easy then and it isn't easy now. But it's what Peter and Andrew and James and John did and it's what all of us are called to do today. We don't have to have all the answers before we start following Jesus. If we wait for that, we'll never get going. And these first disciples certainly didn't have all the answers when they followed Jesus. And nor did they know everything that was about to happen before they stepped out in faith either. One wonders if they would have been so willing to follow Jesus if they knew all the things that lay ahead for them over the next few years. Faith really is reasoned trust. It's not something you can work out and rationalise all the way through. Friends, they trusted Jesus for their future. And if we want to know how it'll all pan out before we do what God is calling us to do, then we'll never make much progress. Now, these first disciples aren't distinguished by their intellect or by their skill or by their beauty. They were as flawed as anyone before or since. What they did manage to do was to see in Jesus someone that was worth following so much so that they gave up everything they knew to follow him and you know i think it can be tempting to think that this was the only time the only moment when they had to make this decision but i'm not sure that that's right as they watch and listen and learn from jesus over the three years of his ministry and that's what a disciple is a pupil a follower someone committed to learning and growing 
we see in the Gospels over and over how they have to adjust and reframe and work things out as they go along. Oh, that it were as simple as deciding to follow Jesus and then our course would all be laid out for us from that moment nice and simply. Instead, just like the first disciples, we'll have moments, sometimes many moments, where we can decide if we're open to learning something new or if we're willing to confess our sin or if we're up for a new adventure. Each day of our lives, we have decisions to make to nurse our anger or lay it down, to love or to hate, to be stingy or generous, to encourage or critique. And the best thing about these constant opportunities to choose God is that even when we get it wrong, when we turn away from God, when we sin, we still find ourselves with opportunities to choose life and to choose God each and every day. Wherever you find yourself this morning, know that God has more for you, more adventure, more love, more joy, and that however messed up or unsatisfactory life might feel for you in this moment, God is more than capable of taking you from where you are to a place of abundant life. And friends, that seems like awfully good news to me. Let's sing together as we finish our service. And so friends, may the blessing of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, the God who calls you by name to follow him, be with you this day and always. Amen.